Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So today I'd like to comment on something that came out recently. It says here on Mac Rumors that the Biden administration has re recommended sweeping changes to Apple's ecosystem. A report commissioned by the Biden administration this week recommended new legislation make major changes to Apple's platform restrictions and App Store policies. For those of you who are not aware or who have never used an iPhone, like me, outside of recovering somebody else's data from it. If you use an iPhone, it is unlike other mobile operating systems where if you want to install an application, you could just install whatever you want. You can only install applications from their app store unless you go out of your way to hack the phone. And this is a royal pain in the ass. You are not allowed to use applications that have third-party payment systems. These payment systems have to go through Apple and they take their cut of about 30%, I believe. And it's just... Um, it's, it's, in my opinion, a very, very freedom-destroying thing to own a computer but have the manufacturer of that computer tell you what you can and cannot install on it after you paid $1,000 for it. So it says here, the National Telecommunications and Information Administration is the president's main advisor on telecommunications and internet policy. In April last year, the NTIA announced that it had launched an investigation into competition in mobile app ecosystems. The investigation was triggered by an executive order on promoting competition in the American economy from July of 2021, with the aim of making recommendations for improving competition, reducing barriers to entry, and maximizing user benefit. This is an executive order that I talked about in a couple of my videos. I said here, Biden signed an executive order on right to repair, and that's the same executive order that's being linked over here. And that executive order led to some interesting things happening. So the FTC, as I said in this video, delivered a death blow to anti-repair lobbyists and disingenuous arguments with a very long paper that was filled with citations going over why all the arguments in favor of rest repair restrictions are, well, complete bullshit. And then I went over my testimony that I gave to the FTC here, and Biden asked the FTC to draft right to repair rules, and several years later, nothing got done. Like, literally nothing got done. There is no change whatsoever. I still have no access to any of the stuff that I need to do my job. In my opinion, they've been completely and utterly ineffective at everything that they have tried to do. And there was even this interesting political article that was going over the management of the FTC and how people are be seemingly being demoralized out of actually doing work. Uh, again, there's somebody who walks in with a necklace that has the F word on, um, and it says here, the irreverent jewelry is emblematic of the at times combative attitude she's brought to the role of chief of staff at the FTC. It's an attitude that's helped her rise to the ranks, and it's safe to say the only people that understand what is represented on this chief of staff necklace are the people that were actually hoping the FTC would do something good for the American public, which is really not materialized in any way, shape, or form. So I sincerely doubt that any of this is actually going to get pushed through. And I feel like I'm a bit justified in my salt here. Before this executive order came out, I was actually working with an antitrust attorney and some other individuals on putting together a white paper for the FTC so that as they started to focus more on right to repair, instead of this being a new topic for them, this could be something that they had some really serious legal groundwork for taking action on. I wanted to point out when companies have done similar things in the past, how they had responded in the past, and how it would be appropriate to respond now so that when people start saying, you're not allowed to do this, or you're overstepping your authority, instead of them having to do their homework themselves to say that, no, they had the authority to do it, they could meow like Mr. Clinton, or they could actually come up with this paper that I gave them that would put a little bit of wind in their sails. And my attorney told me after several months of not hearing anything back that this is the least level of engagement he has ever gotten from the FTC on any project in 40 years. I'm not kidding. Lowest engagement in 40 years, which is, yeah, I mean, again, you could just read this article right here and get an idea of what's going on with that. Before I even read through their recommendations, let's just be real that I have no faith in any of this actually happening. It says, third-party app stores should be permitted and users should not be prevented from sideloading apps outside of a gatekeeper's own app store. Legislative and regulatory measures should prohibit restrictions on sideloading, alternative app stores, and web apps. Requirements that ban developers from using alternative in-app payment systems should be banned. Third-party web browser apps should be able to offer full functionality and not face browser engine restrictions. Pre-installed applications, default options, and anti-competitive self-preferencing should be limited, including in search results. Users should be able to choose their own apps as defaults and delete or hide pre-installed apps. And app store review processes should be more transparent. Now, this one is something I hear as a complaint from a lot of coders. Some of it is legit. Some of it is just sour grapes that their app did not get approved, in my opinion. 
This one up here is the primary one when it comes to user freedom. Third-party app stores should be permitted and users should not be prevented from sideloading apps. The fact that we even call it sideloading just demonstrates how much the culture has changed because sideloading sounds like you're doing something you're not supposed to. Instead of walking through the front door, you're going through the side door. You're trying to be a sneak. It's called installing an application. You're installing a program on your computer, the computer that you own that you paid $1,000 for, not, that does not still belong to the manufacturer. And that's something I think you should be able to do. The report says that new legislation and additional antitrust enforcement actions will likely be necessary to remedy existing issues and boost competition mobile app ecosystems. See the NTIA's full report for more information. Apple's ecosystem has come under intense scrutiny by governments around the world in recent years, including in the UK, Germany, Italy, the EU, South Korea, Japan, and more, with a clear appetite from global regulators to explore platform restrictions around issues such as app sideloading, browser engines, and interoperability. Now, the top-rated comment on this article does propose a, a very interesting point and a good counter-argument to this, but it's one that I still don't really follow all the way, and I'll explain why. So the top-voted comment on this article says, this makes no sense. If you start a company, build it into a huge company, do you lose your rights to operate your product as you see fit? The competition cries and cries. Okay, so make your own phones and trillion-dollar company. It's like if you created a bakery and grew it into a huge chain, then Krispy Kreme complained to the government that your bakery won't let them come in and sell donuts in your stores. Like WTF kind of logic is this. If competitive app stores were allowed in the iPhone, be prepared for way more spyware and malware to slip through the cracks. Do you think Samsung polices their app store as well as Apple does? Sometimes bad apps slip through, even with Apple's much higher focus on security and privacy. So their point is, listen, this is their company, therefore somebody else should not be able to tell you what you can do with your company. Okay, let's just apply that logic here. This is your $1,000 iPhone XS. Shouldn't you be allowed to install what you want to install on your iPhone XS? Yes. Again, what we're talking about here is giving Apple the freedom to restrict your freedom. So, again, and this is an interesting, this is a really interesting argument to be had here when it comes to freedom versus net freedom. We're talking about giving Apple the freedom to restrict your freedom as a user. So, we, they should be free to tell you that you can't install applications or programs of your choice on your computer. If we were having this discussion in the 80s, the 90s, dare I say even the early 2000s, I think that it would have been a lot different than it is now. And one of the things that I've commented on when it comes to right to repair in general is that a lot of the reason this has even become an issue is because there has been a massive cultural shift from where we were 100 or even 50 years ago. 100 years ago, the idea that you shouldn't be, it's too dangerous to be able to work on a battery in a smartphone where pe when people, you know, are working on their own cars in their own driveway, this 6,000 pound truck that can go 60 miles an hour and you're allowed to fix the brakes in your own, would have been ridiculous. But now as time has gone on and we have a seemingly lower respect for the concept of freedom and also choice when it comes to what you do with what you own, that's where this mindset and mentality is able to come through. So let's say I agree with him. Let's say it's your company, you own it, you should be able to do what you want with it. Doesn't the same thing hold true for your personal property? Again, this is not Apple's computer after you pay for it. It's your computer and you should be able to do what you want with your computer. Now it says, nuts, most of these things will have real costs in terms of security, support, complexity, and lack of uniformity, which all give the iOS ecosystem increased value. Government overreach, in my opinion, it's not like Android is not a serious alternative. True, Android is a serious alternative, and you can do things on Android, like install modifications of Android, like the Android open source project, like what I use. I use Graphene OS. I think it's be definitely better than the stock Android that you get with every other carrier. It works better. It is more secure. It has better functionality, and it gives me more control over my device. The Android open source project is great because they do at least keep it open source, and it is a viable alternative. That being said, when we talk about having real costs in terms of security, support, complexity, if you don't want to use somebody else's app store, you have the choice to not install their app store. If you don't want to sideload apps onto your phone, that's great. Even if this stuff passes and actually goes somewhere, which again, it's not. Let's just be real. None of this shit's going anyway. This executive order is not going to actually get anything done. I have been putting effort into this for several years, and I have pretty much hit a brick wall um, all of my attempts to actually get anything done, whether we're talking about red rural farm country or whether we're talking about the most progressive states in the United States. I have got, I've gotten bupkis so far in spite of the fact that this order has been passed and in spite of the fact that I got a nice little 50-plus page report here going over all the lobbyist arguments and why they're BS that Kathy Holcher will never bothered to read and neither did anybody in California, but, but I'm not salty. But in all seriousness, you don't have to do this. 
you can, if all of this stuff passes, you still have the right to live life under Apple's thumb. If you want to only install the apps that Tim Cook personally says to, you can do that. And again, it really does become a question of, like again, we're talking about, it, we're not even talking about a 30% fee to be on their app store. We're talking about any sort of payments, any sort of transactions that occur between you and the person who, cre who created the app, they get a 30% cut of perpetually forever. And there's no way around it. And you can install a different, like, that's a lot of control. It's a lot of control. And it's, it's a degree of control that I think is scary to, to normalize. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.